Okay, this was absolutely the perfect draft. I want some rest. Are we having fun yet? Okay, so as you guys know, this is my very first time just diving deep into a draft. I have not had to do that in previous years because uh, I've been a spoiled boy. I've been very, very spoiled over the years. Usually it's just like, uh, you know, we'll pick a player. He'll be good. He'll... He'll turn into something maybe, if not a role player, and everything's gonna be okay because we're gonna win 50 games regardless. But those days are over, is long, is long gone. We are in a completely different era of basketball and the San Antonio Spurs needed talent and that is what they got. Now, with that being said, there are three things that I think the Spurs needed, essential things actually, uh, going into this draft and they absolutely grabbed it a little bit of it was luck i'll be honest a little bit of it was luck, especially malachi coming to the spurs that that's crazy he shouldn't have went down to 20 okay he's projected lottery at times um but with that being said look that's huge okay that's a big deal but there are three things that i want to kind of address and we're going to go point by point by point i'm not going to really focus in on blake wesley even though i do think that he fits one of those molds i'm just going to chill with that one right now because i want to kind of do um, a little bit more on him um, going forward but let's just focus on our 9 and 20 right now now the first thing that the san antonio spurs absolutely needed was defense and oh my god they got it with sohan he is utterly ridiculous you guys know i've been huge on him for a very long time now um so if you're wondering where i got these articles from i didn't want to focus in on spurs articles because i didn't want any biases going into it so i just kind of searched around and just saw what's the main consensus on some of these guys uh before the draft so this is back in may and let's go ahead and read here this is a knicks article the switchability that projects to translate to the next level is insanely enticing to NBA teams. The off-ball defense is so disruptive uh, to opposing offenses. At the college level, Sohan was able to single-handedly end offensive possessions with absurd activity and awareness and switching between the post and the perimeter. He has a brilliant basketball mind, and we're definitely going to talk about that in a minute, that brings hyperbolic comparisons to Draymond Green and nowhere is that more apparent than his defensive awareness. At times, when watching Baylor on defense, it seems like Sohan... Uh, would know what the offense was doing before they did it moving on what makes this defense so appealing is the combination of hyper awareness or hyper aware a uh, brilliant basketball mind with elite physical tools and non-stop levels of activity each of those traits is as impressive as the next and all are sure to draw attention to what he is doing on that side of the ball it is impossible to say what is more impressive between the way Sohan can use his strength and length to guard bigs in the post or the way he can switch and stay in front of guards on the perimeter. Now, the reason why I wanted to focus in on the basketball mind is if you didn't know, he talked about this like plenty of times before. His mom was actually a point guard. Um, so a lot of his IQ comes directly from her um, understanding guards and bigs alike and, you know, just kind of adapting that to his game so his iq his high iq and his defensive iq is what's going to keep him in the nba and one thing i want to go ahead and bring up too like if you look at his shooting stats they're not good they're, they're not great at all okay they're not good uh but with that being said uh you have to think like what would keep you in the top 10 lottery picks with not great shooting well this is what it is it's the defense and that's one thing that the san antonio spurs absolutely needed um and going forward this is actually another article that I found, and this is him just crediting his mom. Basically, he's just saying that his mom always told him that defense comes first. And basically, you know, if your offense is off, uh, it's OK because you can have your defense there and your offense will come uh, naturally. And I do like that. That's really good advice. And moving on, this is what I really like. So this is what Sohan had to say. Very confident in himself. Um, so he believes that he can switch one through five on the and he can. He can actually one through five on the ball and also the off ball defense being a communicator being loud a little bit scrappy that makes me the best defender <sighs> you love to see it and that's absolutely something that the spurs needed we needed someone who's a little bit more versatile defensively i'm not saying that we're a bad defensive team but i don't necessarily think that we had anyone that's an absolute lockdown and sohan is someone that's so disruptive that i think you know sometime in the future he could be that 
legitimate lockdown or at least somebody that's going to just really make it hard on you and that's what you want um so that's the number one thing that i think the spurs needed in this draft okay when, uh, one or two is, is they're, they're pretty close here's the second thing okay the second thing that the spurs need and this is going to be coming from malachi branham of course is we need someone who is a dynamic scorer and malachi as a freshman he shows such high IQ. This is why I wasn't expecting him to even be available. Um, I called him a mid-range specialist, but he's very methodical. He he knows how to get the ball in the basket. He knows where his teammates is at all times. He's just a smart basketball player, um, and he he can definitely he can definitely put up some points on you in in a hurry if you're not if you're not uh you're not paying attention pay attention um but anyways yeah so let me go ahead and show this this is what i kind of found and this is from uh i just want to give some credit uh buckeyes now fan nation all right so let's go ahead and read here and honestly i was expecting him to go to the Cavs. that's why i was like he's going to be a lottery pick I, I was just expecting him to go to the Cavs. but anyways uh late lottery brandon's frame length scoring instincts and shot making prowess off the dribble 44 percent and with his feet set, 43% makes his game look seamlessly translatable for what the NBA is looking for at his position. He started the season slowly, but looked like one of the most talented perimeter players in the country down the stretch, carrying Ohio State offensively and in a highly efficient manner. And that's what you like right here. Highly efficient. I really do believe Malachi Branham could be exactly what the spurs were looking for at that spot i truly believe that if he wasn't there they probably would have took Pro prochita i i just feel like they they thought that prochita was gonna land pretty late which he did and yeah unfortunately he was like two spots before us but the spurs what, what i'm trying to get at is the spurs were definitely going to look for somebody who can be a dynamic scorer and malachi branham it took them no time to pick him i don't think they were expecting him to be there i don't know if anyone was expecting him to be at 20 that's crazy um and the san antonio spurs got a steal and that's kind of uh that's kind of what happens often with us these steals but yeah he's an absolute steal he's a, he's an absolute stud and he's going to be legitimate so now defensively he doesn't really fit that need but hey that's what we got our boy sohan for he is so oh, i love me some i love me some sohan all right so the last thing that we needed okay and this is going to be really quick all right and this is where i have to uh fight spurs fans just a little bit okay maybe a lot um so anybody that was upset with this pick and you said why didn't the spurs go get a big jeremy sohan is literally a big he's an inch shorter everyone that says well we could have got jalen Dern," he's literally an inch shorter than jalen Dern, and he's way more versatile defensively and offensively with way higher upside i'm sorry i understand that you like the label of center but we're in a new era okay a lot of players are pretty positionless and when it comes to sohan he could very well play the three four or five he can switch all over the place there so all i'm saying is you got a just as capable defender you got someone who hustles just as hard um and you got a player that you can really utilize in so many different aspects and i'm going to do a video as well um talking about kind of how he can adjust to so many different situations that i found an article and i found it so interesting um but yeah you got someone that's just way more versatile and just better <laughs> just just like way better so i understand that you want the label of center but this is kind of a new era and you can still get somebody that's in that archetype but the spurs needed a big and they got it they needed defense they got it they needed a dynamic score they grabbed it they needed a big and this is the big we got it's perfect it was a perfect draft um so the spurs they they hit it out of the ballpark i know that a lot of people um are we're probably going to complain anyway but please just just try to look around um uh fine if, if you want and i'm going to put a lot of information out Okay, so maybe just keep up with the channel if you want, but just, you know, do a little research before you get like really hung up on these players and say that these are bad picks. They weren't. It was it was some phenomenal picks. These two these first two picks, they they couldn't have done better than they did. So Anyways, I'll get with you guys later, man. If you want to support the channel only $2 per month, Patreon, YouTube members link in the description. Until next time. Deuces.